Hey everyone, this is Ara Bowman here at AB Plus Production Studio, and I am with Zalman Harris, founder of Alitha's Legacy. Mm -hmm. Did I say it right? You did say it right. Oh, thank you for teaching me. So, oh. Zalman, uh, you and I have been friends for quite some time now, mm -hmm. also working together. And you also helped me starting um, my personal brand, uh, Ara Bowman, Adabi True 60 originally. Yeah. The name you came we up came with. with the name. Well, you came up with the name. I listened to you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are out there because of the current circumstances, what's going on. And, and I'm fortunate, uh, you know, um, challenging times that we all encounter. How do you feel about this whole thing, epidemic? It's, it's kind of scary, but um, I'm trusting that um, this too shall pass. Um, everybody have got everybody has their view of, of what's going on everybody's got their conspiracy theories of what's going on but you know the fact of the matter is um, this virus virus is real and people are getting sick and people are dying from it so I think we should just adhere to the social distancing and also you know staying at home and not you know crowding places because that's how it spreads um, I wanted to help you get the word out about your foundation. Thank you. Um, Alita's legacy, right? So what I want to know is why was Alita's legacy formed in, fir place, in first place? Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, Alita's legacy was formed um, to give kids in Africa hope and, and um, education because um, the thing is kids in these third world countries um, are having this problem where you know the educational um, system is broken and um, the standards are kind of um, below what a normal you know educational standard would be so we're trying to see how we can give these kids um, the hope and the education um, to give them a solid foundation because um, personally I realized that coming from Africa and coming from Liberia, I had a... That's where you uh, uh, raised? Born and raised. Born and yeah. raised, okay. I had um, a good foundation, education-wise. So um, because of that, the, uh, leaving my house or leaving home at the age of 13, um, 18 and traveling the world and stuff, it was because of that solid foundation that I had, you know, that made me successful in everything that I did. And these kids, they do not have that, that, that opportunity. Why uh, this uh, foundation, Elisa Legacy, was formed? Mm -hmm. Truly, why? Well, um, when I came to the States, um, I decided to never ever go back to Africa. I never wanted to go back to Africa after what, ha what I, I had been through and what I had seen. And then in 2010, I just started to have this urge to, to go back and do something. So, um, and then I had, you know, this voice that told me, well, you've got, you know, your family school over there that you can start, you know, that could be your first project. And I just kind of like, oh, well, okay, but I never knew how I was going to, to go about doing this stuff. I didn't have money to start. I didn't have any idea of starting a foundation or a nonprofit, or anything like that. And then it took me another five years. I moved to, to Destin. Uh, from Minnesota and when I moved here started working with VIP magazine and and having all these contacts and then things just started to come about you know so I found myself going to Liberia and and starting um, this foundation we're now working on this school that my grandfather um, opened in the 60s and um, the school is actually named after my, my, my family so we went, uh, met with the, um, the principal, um, talked to the, um, the education um, minister and, and secretary, and um, they all gave us the green light to go and, and, and start this, this project. So, what so it's not like you just go there, you put a school in the no, land. No. You have to go through a process, you have, yeah. to have to go through there too. Yeah. You have to go through form your foundation here, form your 501C3, C3, yeah. and that's a whole lot of long process. <laughs> yeah, process oh, we know it. Um, which I understand also financially how much you need and from that and also you have the other financial where you need there where you have to go through a process as well. Yeah. So, so we went through all of that and got to go ahead and um, and 
decided to, to start this project. So right now the project is ongoing. Um, they, they, they've already built the wall around the school, um, the fence. Now they're, they're doing the, the foundation for the, mm -hmm. the, main, the main school building. And so how are, you, how are you getting your funding? I mean, do you have co any corporate sponsors right now? We do not have any corporate sponsors right now, and we're hoping we can we can you know get some of those people to get on board to help us with um, this endeavor. Um, but we have um, local people here who were very gracious. We had a fundraiser dinner here in February. Um, it was very successful. These people came and supported Elita's legacy, which was um, very gracious of them. Um, the thing about the people here in Walton and Okaloosa counties. Um, these people are so generous. They're so quick to come and help, you know, when they're called upon. And I want to say thank you to all of those who, you know, who came to the dinner and all of those who are supporting us in, in um, giving these kids um, the education that they need. Um, these people, um, they've been very helpful, um, to say the least. We raised uh, close to $60,000, and this is how we, you know, have started building the foundation and, and getting all these all these things things started. The people who are working now actually because it's a lockdown in Liberia, they they refuse to go home. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about that. How is that happening right now in this uh, moment uh, where we go? People into? are moving so fast. Um, they refuse to go home because they've got a 21 day lockdown. So they're like, so they lock down in a construction on the site. site. Yep. They're like, so they're not going to see their families. Nope. They're like, we're wow. just going to be here. We're just do they use work. their? Do they have phones? Yeah, though? they have phones. Yeah. So they can at they least can communicate. communicate. Okay, they can communicate so they can do FaceTime. Yeah. that's so but amazing. They, they, they said they're not going home. They're going to just stay there and and complete the project until the the lockdown ends. Wow. So they're really working. If you go to Alita's Legacy um, Facebook page, you will see the progress. You'll see um, the construction being um, that that's going on right now. So. Yeah, I've been following the progress on Facebook myself and. I saw like how much builders are working. Uh, did you raise all the money for this particular project yet? No. Where are you yet. right now with that? Uh, we're halfway. Um, we're halfway there, and we're hoping that we can get more people to 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 donate. To we have a GoFundMe page on Facebook, well, a couple of them, and then we also have a, a, a fundraising. Um, a fundraiser on Facebook also that people can go or you just go directly to the website elitislegacy.org and, and make a contribution there. Um, we need, um, I think there's still a balance of about $69,000 to get the whole building uh, completed from where we are right now. Let me let me clarify, you said how much? $69,000. $69,000 what's, $69, what's yeah. left. Um, if I'm calcula calculating correctly, I think that's what's left to complete the building and that is not to equip or furnish the building um, it's just to to have the building so you're looking to raise an addition of sixty nine thousand yeah, dollars basically now, yeah. guys here's another way you could do and par partake in this project uh, we understand the funds are really tight for a lot of people right now but here's what you don't understand and i'm about to tell you you can share uh, zalman's story because there might be people out there that they feel a need in this time to help others because what I've discovered is this. It's very powerful and, and, and you're going to love this one. When we are so hurt and when we are so, you know, sometimes we crumble inside so much. The best thing I've learned to do is to turn that in something by giving. Mm -hmm. By doing something so good to yourself, by not being about yourself, by being by others. Because that comes back to you so much. Yeah. And it really helps you become so much resilient to moments like this that may come or not. But this is the lesson that I've learned from this, uh, what are we going through? True. So That's you can true. share this video to have other people maybe learn uh, about your story that you shared. It's so profound, thank you. Thanks. Uh, any questions you have about uh, the foundation, uh, reach, out, reach out to Zalman Harris on social media or you tell them where they can find well, you. Well, elitistlegacy.org or info at Elitist Legacy, or Zalman at Elitist Legacy. Um, I'll be willing to answer whatever questions you have. Um, and I'm hoping that we can have people, you know, help these kids um, with this education. Um, I want to just make something clear that, you know, a lot of people ask me um, or come up, you know, telling me that while well, there are kids here in America um, 
why should we give to your cause and not the kids here? The thing is, we're not taking anything from the kids, you know, anything away from the kids that are here in, in Okaloosa or Walton County or in the United States. The sad thing is, just as these kids here in America feel that you're the closest, you know, to them, the kids in Africa feel that people all the way here in Florida, which is about 5,000 miles away, are just as close because we are the only people who can give them this hope. They don't have anything or anybody in Liberia to help them with, 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 with this education or help them um, get this foundation that we're open to give them because the government itself is struggling. Um, they just re they're trying to recover from a 14 year civil war. So it's, it, it's, it is tough. Um, these kids are so vulnerable and, and we're just trying to give them that, that hope and that education because at the end of the day, people say that the children are the future leaders. Most of the time we say that loosely, um, but if we really want to put in the time, the energy and put our money where our mouth is by giving these kids hope, we're giving the children of the future, you know, who are going to be future leaders. And we're know, also teaching a behavior to other kids out there that might grow up in a sense of entitlement. Mm. And yep. that could be another message where they can see how other people are willing to help others in the world. Uh, because really, truly, that's the only thing we can do right now to just uh, stay, stick together. So thank you for sharing your story. Welcome. Uh, we'll wrap it up here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know if you have, uh, you know, any questions, suggestion topics. We're willing to do more lives if you think that's something uh, you guys want. Uh, other than that, hey, stay strong. And, thank you. Um, and thanks for having me. Thank you for sharing your story. Okay. Signing off.